You're invited to a real English conversation with me and my husband Dan. Hi. We're gonna be talking about education today. You asked us your top education questions in English, and we're going to have a chit chat about those questions, immerse you in English, and I hope you will end up on the other side of this conversation with a higher level of vocabulary, more confidence about speaking in English, and you'll enjoy it along the way. And like always, I've created a free PDF worksheet, which is over Dan's face at the moment, with all of today's important vocabulary, definitions, sample sentences, everything that you're going to hear in this lesson, you will get in the free PDF worksheet. So you can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. All right, Dan, are you ready to get started with the first question that yes. our students have asked us? I'm ready to get educated. All right, let's do it. <laughs> These education questions were asked by my student Carmen from Italy and Mai in Australia. Are you ready for the first one? I'm ready. All right, the first question is, what age does school start in the US? That's where we're from, the US. And what does the education system look like? So let's start with the first question. What age does school start in the US? Yeah, so a lot of kids go to some kind of school around four years old. Mm -hmm. So this would be preschool mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases, this is not provided by the state. Yeah, this is something that parents have to pay for out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And I would say this is like kind of like daycare, except mm -hmm. maybe a little more education peppered in because mm -hmm. they're really little kids. Yeah. And then official school is kindergarten, which starts around five or six years old. Yeah. And this is where real school begins. <laughs> We're sitting and trying to learn our letters and alphabet yeah. and reading and here's numbers and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And then elementary school would be first through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first through fifth grade, uh, which is probably what, seven to 11 or 12? Yeah. Yeah. Something 10, like 11 that. 10, 11 years old. Yep. And then it moves on to middle school, mm -hmm. which is everybody's favorite time of existence, 12 to 14 -ish. This is a great example of sarcasm. <laughs> oh, yes. This is sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Middle school, not known for being the most fun time. And no. it's funny because a lot of kids are like moving at this time. Like they're mm -hmm. going in, they could be going to a different school, different classes. Yeah. And then you're going through this awkward time in your life. And yeah. Here's some other new people for you. It'll be fun. So, yeah, that's an interesting time. Usually middle school has the stereotype of being pretty rough, mm -hmm. pretty tricky. And then after middle school is high school. Mm -hmm. And by that point, you're what, like 14 years old? You're a real man. Like 14 through 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So you're not right at the beginning, the cusp of puberty. Instead, you're a little further in and maybe a little more mature yeah. maybe N ninth grade is still kind of awkward ninth grade is still pretty because you're rough. you know when you're in ninth grade and you're like 14 or 15 and then you see like a 17 or 18 year old a lot of the especially if you're a guy like me puberty <laughs> can hit all of a sudden and then you'll be a man versus like i was a boy <laughs> a little boy when you're yes. in ninth grade hi guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is the typical progression of school and there's a couple different options in the U.S. You could go to public school, which is free. It's paid for by your taxes. So if you pay taxes, it's technically not free. Free, not free. Yes, yeah, so free, not free. It's paid for by the state. Um, you could go to public school. You could go to a public charter school. So this is kind of a nuance where you don't have to pay extra to go to a charter school, but it's somehow it's run privately it's run privately it's smaller usually the programs have a little bit higher quality and to get into a charter school you often need to do a lottery mm -hmm. and this isn't like the lottery where you try to win a million dollars this is where you just sign up and they pull a kid's name out of a hat totally random and if you get it you get it and if you don't you don't so it's not based on your income, it's not based on where you live, because most or most public schools are based on where you live. You have mm -hmm. to go to the school in your neighborhood. Yeah, but a charter kind of school, <laughs> yeah, especially if you live in an area that's really poor, well, your school is probably not gonna be very high quality, and yeah. there's, there's a lot of controversy about that because it's kind of a cycle. Yeah, it's definitely a cycle. <laughs> you don't have as many resources to get out of poverty and all of that. So we've got public school, charter school, private school. I have a little statistic here I looked up in advance, mm. fancy. Uh, private schools, 9% of students 
go to a private school mm-hmm. and parents have to pay extra for a private school. It could be a religious private school. It could be a secular private school. Um, our child, Theo. He's probably in the 1%. Because he goes to a nature school. <laughs> it's not religious He's in the based. Point five percent. It's a very unusual private school, mm. but there's also other types of private schools, um, like a nature school, where half of the day they spend time outside in the woods, or the teachers try to incorporate the outside nature into the lessons. A lot of times, these schools will call themselves alternative education. Mm-hmm. So that just means we're we're trying to do something different here. Yeah, so. yeah, and there's varying degrees of quality. Just yeah. because you're paying for it doesn't mean that it's going to be vastly better quality than the free public school. So if you come to the U.S. and you think I want my kid to have the best education, I think I can afford to pay for private school. Make sure you check it out first and make sure that it's actually the quality that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of scholarships actually. So the school that our son goes to, um, a lot of people have an 80% scholarship to go to the school, which makes it very affordable. Mm. (laughs) Um, The state has scholarships, the school provides some scholarships, there's some grants given to the school to provide scholarships, so they're trying to make it more accessible. Yeah, most schools, especially private schools and anything education related, Mm. you're gonna find a lot of organizations that will try to help kids get into whatever they really, really want. And the government helps with that as well in America. I think a lot of it comes down to the parents having the ability to sign up, follow through with the applications, sign up for the scholarship. That doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's easy, but it is an option. Um, Mm -hmm. There is a fourth option, which is what Dan experienced when he was a child, (laughs) homeschooling. Look at me. So interestingly enough, what percent of Americans do you think homeschool? This means that generally don't peek your mom this is what i learned in homeschooling (laughs) your mom or your dad is your teacher usually your mom Mm -hmm. and there's like local organizations that you can join weekly like a co-op they call it a homeschooling co-op um what percent of american children are homeschooling as of 2021 well i would have guessed it was very low Mm -hmm. uh See, I think I, I looked at your phone earlier you and saw cheated. it. Well, you showed it to me. <laughs> okay. But I would have guessed like 2% uh, Okay. before seeing that. Okay. But I think it's higher. Yes, the answer is 7%. Which is pretty high, It's actually. almost the same amount as go to private school. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so 7%. And the interesting thing is... I guess is, it probably bumped up after COVID, too. Yes, that's the big thing. So mm-hmm. before COVID, it was... I think four or five percent and now it's seven percent and it's growing ten percent every year so Mm. it's hard to talk about those stats but uh, it's growing every year because of all the changes in education yeah and private or public schools gotten kind of like a bad reputation as Mm -hmm. well I mean there's varying qualities but a lot of people where they live their school is not very good Mm. and it's not just teachers it's also like the peers you're with and Mm. It's kind of, I don't know. I mean, obviously I teach at an alternative school, so I don't, I'm not a big fan of the traditional model and I don't like all the bureaucracy and Mm. uh, not to say that there's not a lot of good hearted people in the system. I just think that the system is, well, it might sound a little cliche, but it's broken. (laughs) Yeah. So those are the general options in the U.S. And I think the cool thing is that if you choose an alternative option, private school, charter school, homeschooling, it's not seen as very weird. It's Mm. unusual. It's not the majority, but you're not like an outcast. You're not so weird. Like, oh my goodness, you homeschool? It's not like that generally. It's just, oh, okay. Someone does something different. I think that's kind of like in the American culture. That that is very much an American culture thing. Yeah, you accept people, try to accept people who do different things. Mm -hmm. And because we lived in South Korea for a while, like Mm -hmm. we felt that difference so big. Like we never met anybody who homeschooled there. We met like one family. Yeah. Like, whoa, this is amazing. Yeah, like everyone uses the same education system and deviating from that norm is really unusual. Yeah, or even looked down on. But in America, if you do something different like that, people, they may like sometimes go and like whisper about it or Mm -hmm. like say, I don't really agree with that. But they'll never tell you to your face that they have a problem with 
that just like a decision you might make, especially yeah. and a personal decision. Dan was homeschooled until how old? Yes, until 13, 13? I think. Okay. Yes, until middle school. And Dan's pretty roughly. cool. <laughs> yes, and I, I feel like homeschooling today is way better than it was when I was a kid. Like, way more resources. I think that what I experienced, I don't want for my kids, but today I can kind of feasibly hmm. see how you can uh, you know, build up certain social exposures, have mm. certain groups. Yeah. There's a ton of resources online. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your mom certainly did the best that she oh, could Oh, yeah. Do. My, my mom did a good job. I think it was just for me personally. I don't think it, like, it fit what I probably needed mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. Like you looking back, needed more pressure to I, like I needed a, have deadlines out, and stuff. <laughs> I needed another authority other than my mom, mm. and I needed better, like a bigger social circle mm. and a little more structured education. I thought it would, think would have been good for me. Mm. Not that my mom wasn't somewhat structured, but it's just a, it's a different kind of thing. Yeah, homeschooling in the '90s compared to homeschooling now, 30 yeah. years later, that's crazy. All right, let's go on to question number two. Do most American students go to universities after their graduation? Is it considered important? Hmm. Let's talk about like our general feel first, and then I've got some stats about yeah, good. how many people actually because go. Because I haven't looked at the stats. Okay. This time I didn't make it that far. Let's hear what's inside your heart, Dan. So I think, <laughs> yes, people generally go to, we would say college, mm -hmm. but I it's think a, lo thing. a lot of the world would say university. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the percentage, but I would say What's your guess? What's your guess? Is a good time? 80, <laughs> no, 75%. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Okay, no, well. No, 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 it's not 92%, <laughs> 61%. I think this is showing your your bias. <laughs> because. 50%. <laughs> I don't know which way the bias is. Let's say that. So for us, we have a four-year degree, and that's what you call it when you go to college for four years. You could have a two-year degree. It's called an associate's degree or a four-year degree. Um, and we have four-year degrees. And I think there's been some studies that show like if you have a four-year degree, most of the people in your social circle also have the same or close to the same level of education. Yeah, everybody I know is educated. So that's why you think it's so high. <laughs> Dang it. I should have thought about that. <laughs> okay, so in let's compare 1990 to 19 or to 2021. Okay. In 1990, the people who graduated high school were 77%. So 77% of students graduated from high school mm -hmm. and 20% of people graduated from college. Okay? <laughs> 2021, 91% of people graduated from high school. Okay. So much higher percentage rate, and 38% of people graduate I'm from college. I'm way off. <laughs> yeah, so it is higher. It is bumped up a lot, And though. all of the charts that I saw were all going up. So mm -hmm. finishing high school and college are definitely on the rise. Not 70% or whatever you said, but it, it probably is 70% of the people we know, which I think is oh, sure. quite interesting. And that's kind yeah. of part of the cycle of education, I think, that... If you don't know anyone who's been to college, it probably won't be a priority for you. Mm -hmm. And it will be harder for you to go because you won't have people who know how that process works and all of that. But if you've been to college, like us, it will be easier for our kids to do that process because we've been Yes. There. I'm glad I could be instructive of, <laughs> of a fallacy, you know, the, my personal experience. But Well, yeah. thanks for being willing to be the fallacy in front of millions of people yes. online. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> um, but this is also a part two of the question. Is it considered important? Oh, well, again, this probably goes to your social circle, because mm -hmm. in my social circle, it was super important. Mm -hmm. And I think this is probably family by family. I would say it's almost expected. If your parents yes. are college graduates, Definitely. it's almost expected. Of course, you'll go to college. However, um, I think I have heard from certain like our neighbor, I think she said she was the first to go to college mm -hmm. and like it was like looked upon as like great, but it wasn't like expected. Yeah. And I, but as a society, it is definitely encouraged. Like, you know, there's ads mm -hmm. playing on the, the TV and YouTube mm -hmm. and uh, every teacher will tell you going to college and I'm just going to say university because more people say that probably. <laughs> Going to university is going to be a great benefit to your life and mm. all this kind of stuff. So yeah. I think that is 
definitely pushed in society. That probably is another reason why I think that a lot of people go.、Mm. Uh, but I'm also forgetting about how expensive it is. Yeah, that's the other thing is that it's for a lot of for a really lot of expensive.、Um, I would say anywhere between. Thirty thousand and two hundred thousand dollars for a four-year degree, depending on if you go to a community college or if you go to a state school or if you go to a private school. It can range anywhere in there, and that's a big burden for a young person starting off in their career to have to pay. Are the state those schools、loans. aren't cheap or free. They are not cheap and they are not free. Okay, they are cheaper than、know. private schools. <laughs> yeah,、um, it's a very complicated system. But I, I, I think I'm a little ignorant in this realm because、mm. I haven't thought about college in a while. But、yeah. you know, we went to a small private school, and like that's known for being like pretty expensive. Yeah, and, yeah. But and for me, I had to get a lot of scholarships to go to that school.、Mm. So I like applied for tons of scholarships. The school also had scholarships. And it was pretty much required. If I was going to go to that school,、mm-hmm. I had to have a lot of money already paid for.、Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it was just too expensive. But I、yeah. think it's interesting because of our experience. We felt, if I can speak for you too, we felt pretty burdened. Even though we had scholarships, we felt pretty burdened post college to pay back our student loans. When you start off your life, your adult life, in debt. That's so hard, and my parents tried so hard. They paid a lot of money. I had a lot of scholarships, and I still had college debt that I had to pay back. So even though I think I was probably starting off in the best possible position,、mm. it still felt like a burden. So I think for us, at least for our children, I have no idea what the education scene will look like in another fifteen years. But I think that. We might have a different perspective on college because we've been there. We know what it's like. We know if it helped us or not in our life, and how expensive it is, and if it's worth it. <laughs> like, are there other alternatives? Yeah, and in our changing world, those might be better. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's a cliche among people our age、mm-hmm. that college is not worth it. Yeah, and that it's just way too expensive for what you get out of it, and it doesn't really prepare you, and all this stuff.、Mm-hmm. I、um, think if you graduated like two thousand five to two thousand ten, two thousand around that, two thousand maybe even fifteen in that range, you probably feel like us that、yeah. your degree does not mean you will get a good paying job.、Mm-hmm. It's not. Uh, a given that that will happen. Yeah,、um, I think initially when we went to college, there was like a a, a transitional phase、yeah. where everything was getting it was getting a lot more expensive,、mm-hmm. and that cost benefit analysis、yeah. was maybe making less sense. But、mm-hmm. a lot of our families were still saying the same message that you just have to go, even if you're not even sure what you want to do.、Mm-hmm. Which was in my case, which、yeah. I think didn't help me. Yeah.、Uh, well, this, my job didn't even exist when I went to college. Yeah. This job teaching English online was not even、uh, an option.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, know, it's but, it's tricky. Yeah, and I I don't know exactly what the future. I don't know what the future holds, but well, I、don't? feel like the world changes really, really fast. <laughs>、mm. In that, I will certainly not tell my children they have to go to college. Yeah, and that like this will make all the difference. I'll be like, well, what exactly do you want to do?、Mm. Let's get in that program. Let's look at the cost benefit an- analysis of、mm-hmm. how much it costs, and like really dig in there. Unfortunately,、yeah. I don't feel like my parents did that. But their generation really was the last generation who said. I'll get a university degree, and that will give me a good job, and it worked.、Mm. So their expectation was what happened to them, but that's not how it is now. Yeah.、Um, anyway, who knows what will happen in the next ten to fifteen years for our kids? But I certainly won't pressure them, and I won't feel disappointed if they decide not to go to college,、mm. as long as they are independent adults, you know,、yeah. trying to do something different and.、Um, I'm going to transition to the last question and skip one question actually,、oh. because it's a. I think you're about to say something about it. Oh, am I? I'm going to guess. <laughs>、okay. um, because it has to do with what happens if you don't get a college degree. Is it hard to find a job if you don't have a university degree?、Um, I did a little bit of research about this, but what's your gut say? <laughs> if you don't get a university degree, is it harder to get a job? Yeah, yeah. Like if、um, you didn't have a degree right now. 
I would your prospects be more difficult? It probably is. Um, I don't think it has to be, but I do think that I. Th- I don't know if I've actually read like a study about this, mm. but I think I heard in a podcast that that is like something that employers will look at and they'll, like, they'll be like, all right, check off 40, four year degree. Like mm. they'll just kind of assume that that means a lot. So I do think it does mean something. Unfortunately, I don't think it has to be. Mm. I think that you can probably really get well educated without it Definitely. nowadays. And I think that might even be preferable when you consider how much it costs. Mm-hmm. So um, other than like, there's a lot of social exper- experiences. However, a lot of the social experiences are like getting really drunk and misbehaving and yeah, stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with the keeping a job. of American college <laughs> is that you just go there, yeah. get drunk, sleep with a lot of people, and then maybe you stumble into class once a week. Yeah, it doesn't really like, make any sense And then at you all. pay lots of money for that. That wasn't my college experience, but that is certainly... Oh, it was there. Certainly what happens to a lot of people. Um, right. I, so, yeah, but I'm still saying that it does, mm. unfortunately, probably still matter. Yeah, I would say that that's probably the case for specific careers. Mm-hmm. So what I saw was like, you know, of course, if you're going to be a doctor, if you're going to be an engineer, well, yeah. Um, if you're going to be like in the medical field, you're those very specific technical type of jobs that require education, that education is probably necessary. But for other careers, what I read online said, is a college degree necessary? Yes and no. The yes was, if you want to be in those specific career fields, yeah, if you're going to be a nurse, go get a degree in nursing and you'll be fine. I think it's actually even a two-year degree. Yeah. That's amazing. (laughs) That sounds preferable to me, like some kind of two-year program. I feel like you can learn Maybe not anything, but a lot of things in two years. Yeah. It doesn't have to be four years. But it said, if you want a job that usually says we require a degree or they highly recommend a degree in their application, maybe like a software engineer or something like this. If you are an assertive person who has done a lot of alternative experiences. Now, this takes a specific personality Mm, type, I think. Got to have something for that resume. Yes. You have a good resume. You've interned. You have... Um, maybe taken some extracurricular classes at the local college or maybe even some online courses about um, that specific field. It doesn't have to be a degree. There's a lot of alternatives out there. Yeah, that you can, by your assertiveness, which is really what people are looking for often, people who will see a problem and fix the problem. The skills can really be taught, but that personality um, and character quality can't be taught as much. So if you Mm. show that... Um, then you could get in. So for example, um, this isn't about a job, this is about getting into college. Um, There was a homeschooler who had been homeschooled their entire life and they wanted to get into a huge university. I don't think it was Harvard, but it was like a really high level university. And what they did instead is they, they wrote out, of course, every charity they worked with, every volunteer experience, all of this, But they also wrote a list. The second page of their application was 100 books that I read last year. (laughs) Holy cow. That's like two books a week. (laughs) They wrote out everything that they had read and in order and all of this. And it showed their assertiveness. I'm going to be a good student. I'm going to be dedicated. And I think for a lot of jobs, if you can be outstanding like that, then who cares if you have a degree, ideally. Mm -hmm. Um, A little example, too, is someone who works for me, Um, Laura. Hi, Laura, if you're watching. She uh, helps to write some of the sales content, like sales emails. She's called a copywriter. Uh, When I interviewed her, I don't even know if she has a college degree. I don't even know her official education, but her application process, um, her experience, and she had taken the initiative to do some online copywriting classes and had been working on and off for some other businesses doing their writing as well. So she had this kind of initiative and that's really what I was looking for was someone who was organized, took the initiative, creative, and was interested in the job. They had t- she had taken some classes of her own volition <laughs> and really done it and that's why I hired her. Yeah. And she's been amazing. Actually, a lot of my students who join my courses They say that their job didn't require them to take English classes, but they write on their resume completed 
um, three month English course with、oh. Speak English with Vanessa. Yeah, and this is like the you're an institution. <laughs> it's not a four year degree. It's not an IELTS certificate, something official like that. But it shows that you took the initiative. I think she's pretty official. <laughs> and it showed that you're willing to go the extra mile and to try to do your best.、Um, so I think that's a good example of a way that. Extracurricular education can enhance your career as well.、Mm. Well, talking about internships, I'm curious. In your country, is it common to do an internship? I think in Germany, it's maybe required that you do a year internship after high school.、Mm. That it's like part of the system. I'm not sure. If you're from Germany, let me know. That sounds like a better system to me. That you get. I don't know if that's like real. Real world experience in the world. Yeah, doing something, but、um, I feel like for me that would have been pretty helpful just to kind of get out of the education system. It, I felt very、um, overwhelmed going from high school to four years of college, and then I had had part time jobs working in restaurants and these types of things, but nothing like a career.、Mm. And by my third year of college, I just felt like、oh, I just want to. Go out into the real world and try to get a job. I don't do want to.、Something. Yeah, I want to do something. And it's not common in the U.S. to take a gap year. This is a common thing, I think, in Europe and Australia. That after high school, students will take a gap year and go out and do something. Good job, Europe. Go be a nanny. Go if, volunteer if on a、standard. farm. I, yeah, I think when、go、we were... travel in Southeast Asia, do something.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> When we were in、uh, France that one year, we did meet some like younger people who、mm. seemed to either be taking a gap year or doing、yeah. some kind of intern thing. Yeah, I don't know. I like that a lot. In the U.S., it's kind of strange that you graduate high school and you have this big ceremony and congratulations, you get to move on to more school. Yeah, I pretty much guarantee that if you were in the U.S. and you graduated from、uh, high school and you said, "I'm going to take a gap year and then I'll decide what I want to do." Every single person will say, "If you don't go to college now, you're never going to do it. <laughs> This is your chance to do it now because、mm. you'll forget about it, or you won't have the motivation to do it, or you'll forget about education and forget about math. These types of things. But in reality, if you're not meant to go to college, and you wait a year and you decide not to go to college, well, maybe that was a better path for you. I don't know. I feel a little biased because." I saw people doing that,、um, Europeans who were doing that gap year, and I felt really jealous. Like, <laughs> oh, I would have loved to do that, yeah, but yeah. it's just not in American culture. Maybe it might start becoming part of it as we kind of learn more about Europe. We're like ten years behind Europe <laughs> in those things, but right now it's not part of American culture. You just do school, possibly more school, and、Or、then stop school. Pay back your school with your job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to me today about education. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you all for asking us your great questions. Well, let us know in the comments if having an internship or doing a gap year is common in your country.、Mm. I would love to learn more about that. And don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet, which includes all of the great vocabulary that you saw pop up on the screen here that we used. You can get that vocabulary, definition, sample sentences, and at the bottom of That free worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question so that you never forget what you've learned. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. Well, thanks so much, Dan, for joining me today to talk about education. You're welcome. It was fun. I hope you're a little bit smarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you so much for learning English with me. I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. Bye. But wait, do you want more? I recommend watching this video next, where you will see another real English conversation between Dan and I about parenting our one, two, three children. I can't wait to help you immerse yourself in English more, and I'll see you there.